Hello everyone, Rontro here alongside the happy video game geek. Probably not after this evening. Yeah. <laughs> We're on our third go for this video. Talk about a revival, because that's what this is supposed to be, a revival of Rontro Gaming, now known as Rontro Media. True. And I will let this man explain why it is now Rontro Media. Um, as we pick our turtles. Well, basically, what we wanted to do, I guess, for our like our goal, was to expand upon other forms of entertainment other than just video games. Being music, movies, books. Yeah, we were comic talking books. like comic books, like graphic novels. Uh, we we're gonna do like music covers and. Okay, I got Leo. Like it, it was basically kind of like a. A mix between like what I wanted to do on YouTube, which was reviewing music albums and taking your video game idea and combining the two of them, and then like expanding it to all other kinds of yeah of media. So. That's what we had originally talked about. Was uh, you know I didn't even let the cutscene go this time. Oh my, I, I'm just antsy to get into this again. Well, we we were doing pretty good. Twenty five and a half minutes this time. Can we do it faster? Wait, is it 27? Then we're at 25. 25. So let's see. 25, 34, to be exact this time around. But yeah, it's funny because uh, he gets a hold of me and he goes, hey, wh what about a channel revival? And I'm like, you're, not uh, you you're kidding, right? Yeah. And he's like, no, uh, but like, why don't Dude, we... Do you see that? I just walk right through that. Yes. Let's do more than just music. Let's do or let's right. do more than just video games. Let's do music. Well, then we actually got together oh. to talk about it, and it just kind of morphed from there to movies and oh, that's right. books it was supposed and to be slightly irritable. board games and oh, I really suck this time. <laughs> I'm just throwing caution in the wind. So that that's the whole reason for this channel revival is this guy right here. Approaching me about and saying, "Hey, let's let's get it back going and add some more stuff to it." So here we are. And if we're going to talk about comic books, we're going to get this out of the way now, because <laughs> I've we've mentioned this multiple times about the Turtles comics and stuff being uh, the original and then which, the Archie book comics, which neither of us own. No, I need to either. Seriously correct that or find a way to get a hold of it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, like manga, they have sites for memberships for that that you can read manga and stuff. So I'm, I'm wondering if there's something like that for American comics. Also, make sure you uh, like, comment, subscribe. Yes. That, to, that, to our channel. And that's a must. We, we do have a shirt design um, well, we've got shirts we've got what, mugs stickers just about anything you can masks think which you know we need currently in this pandemic so why not be stylish with it you get a rancho media could one. be wearing a rancho media face mask yes which this guy is behind the design of it uh i have no knowledge when it comes to uh doing anything with editing images as we've seen in the past with some of the stuff I've done on my channel. They, they oh, weren't my. that bad. They weren't that good. They weren't the best. That they, they did what they needed to do. But, um, yeah, as far as the comic books, though, the Turtles, if you uh, look at any of the covers for the comic book, they were all wearing red masks. Um, you can see this on the NES game, the very first ne uh, Ninja Turtles game on the NES. They were uh, all on the cover wearing red masks. They didn't start getting the colored masks until the 80s cartoon. And they did that to, so kids could differentiate between the turtles easily, besides just through their weapons. Which is why they now have colored masks. Which I don't know, did we even say... Uh, I'm Donatello. You're, yeah, you're I'm Leonardo. Leonardo, of course. Not my favorite turtle. My favorite's Michelangelo, which I believe is also your same, favorite. Same. 
but his range is just not great. Donatello has the best range, and he's probably the strongest out of all of them, but he's slow. Leo is more balanced, slightly less range. Michelangelo, he's fast, but doesn't do much damage, and he's uh, close. Uh, Raph's even closer, but does more damage and is sort of slow. So they all do play slightly different. Well, we've done fairly well with this combination. And this time around does not seem like it's going too well. Yeah, I was going to say this is probably our worst one yet, which is a shame. Yeah, considering this is our third time playing it tonight. The first time, there was no audio. Yeah. Don't we know had, what happened there. We had no audio, no video. There was no video of us. The second time around, there was no video of us, nor the game, only audio. But we had audio. <laughs> Nothing but audio. So this is what we're going to go with. So hopefully this time around. It is recording on here, right? Uh, yes, it definitely is this time. Hey, guess what? I didn't fall inside the uh, manhole. You didn't this time. Holy crap. If one thing, I'm getting better at that. <laughs> right. So there is some differences between this version and the arcade version. For those that you don't know, um, this is actually a port of an arcade game. I miss arcades. They, they don't have good ones around, at least around here. Unless you want to count Tilt Stu Studio, which... It's... Eh. We forgot about Chalky Cheese. Dude, I haven't stepped foot in a Chuck E. Cheese since my field trip in the fifth grade. I haven't been in a Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, and trust me, that's a long time ago. For my I'm, own personal enjoyment, in probably like 15 years. It's been longer than that for this guy. I was in one maybe like two years ago for like... I was like a group of people that... I don't know if it was like a child's birthday party or something, but... Yeah. I was kind of disappointed that they turned... They, they no longer do the tokens yeah. on it. It's all play by card. I guess you That's could, how Tilt Studio You could consider is, like Dave & Buster's to kind of be like an arcade style, too. I like, want to go to Dave & Buster's if I've never been. You've never been to a Dave & No. Oh, we're fucking going, Roy. And I just swore on your channel. That's okay. That's what they make editing for. <laughs> if I even bother, because you know what? There's one other time that word has been uttered on this channel. And that's when I was playing Mario Brothers 3. The stage where you it scrolls auto up, and you got to deal with the black okay, ball that unlike, shoots the fires at you. Unlike World the cloud 7 world. or 6? Uh, 5. 5? Five? 5, I believe. 6, I think, is the ice world. Oh, that's right. And 7's uh, the... Giant world. Giant thing. Yeah. Um, 5 is that uh, you start on the ground and make yourself and you make your way up into the clouds. Um, it's that on in that world, and that made me swear for sure. I don't know. I think we're all old enough. We, were, we really went. <laughs> that the, went the joke really on quick. the last one was that I, Mister Head, Mister Head, and it's Metal Head. head. <laughs> you know, we were wondering like what the extensions were. Like, if I mean, his like, arms and legs extend. You know. Does he actually have a metal head? Maybe. We don't know. We don't know. He, he could have a freaking metal head. He could. Could be silicone. Could, could be. be. We don't know. Hey, this is when the uh, differences start happening. Hey. I'm actually right this, this time. This is my uh, least favorite episode, I would have to say. I don't mind See, any of the other ones. I, I, for whatever reason, I just don't like This one, game. don't really... I don't really dislike any of this game. I think the only thing I might dislike about this level is this, uh, gratings that come down, which should be coming up soon. But one of the differences between this version and the arcade version is you do not fight Rat King like you do on this version. You fight a wave of pizza monsters, which are those yellow things that jump out of the water in this stage, if, you're, if you do not know. Yeah, those. I do not like those. I don't think you're even supposed to dodge that. Or you, you just gotta kind of run just, in front of them real quick before they come down and hit you. You just taking damage. Just I I didn't take any damage. 
I actually managed to get ahead of them. You gotta kind of get ahead of them before they come down too far. So also, um, I got to meet the guy that voiced Raph back in the 80s, Turtles, uh, Rob Paulson. Met him at a local con, uh, Sci-Fi Valley Con. He's been uh, at a couple 29, of them, yeah. So, hasn't he? Yes. Um, so I think I was at the 2019 one too, but yeah. he was only there for Saturday and Sunday or something. Yep. Or it, it's like I think Saturday we went and on Sunday. Sunday. I or believe. it was like I think I went like on a Friday. On I can't Friday, remember if it was Saturday. Day. Yeah, I can't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday, but um, I did get. Um, I got to meet him luckily, and I got. Um, I have this DVD that has the first five episodes of Ninja Turtles on it, with a few lost episodes, so they call them. Which I've said before, I'm pretty sure I've seen them before. Maybe, like you said, only released. They were never released on DVD till that moment. Something, but I got him to sign that. I want to have them sign. Now that I have, um, I have all ten seasons in one collection. I want to have them sign that. And uh, this Funko over here, you can't see it, but uh, I have a Snowball Funko that would like to have signed. So, and funny story about meeting him. Um, uh, me and my girl met him. We had our usual resting Grinch face on. <laughs> And, um, yeah, it didn't end that way. Uh, maybe, uh, you had the idea of showing people these pictures on screen, so maybe I'll do that. Um, first picture is me and her with our resting Grinch face. Second picture, he started talking to us, like, in, a, in the voice of Yakko from Animaniacs, which... Uh, sir, I, was it Yakko or was it Pinky? I can't remember. One of them. Um, one of definitely say it was Yakko. Or no, he said Narf. That's what it was. <laughs> I remember now. He said Narf, which made us crack a little bit of a grin. And then he goes, "Where's my testicles, Sumner?" Like Snowball from Rick and Morty. And dude, we were just cracking up laughing. Uh, and that would be the last image. Like the rest of that whole day, we just grinning ear to ear because he's an amazing person he he is like out of like a lot of like hollywood people like rob paulson he he's an amazing guy uh, like he didn't didn't even feel like talking to a celebrity you know like it talked like just like talking to like we're talking he's now like, you know? really down to earth dude, yeah from, like what i've seen absolutely He's amazing. And he's done so many good voices. Like like I said, Raph and Yakko and Pinky. Carl. Carl Weezer. Yep, from uh, Jimmy Neutron. Um, you said he did some uh, work in uh, Land Before, Land Before Time, Time series. series. Which I'd never I'd never realized. Yeah, he's in like... I think... Well, I know he's in the uh, the first sequel. The Great Valley Adventure. Yeah. Oh, okay. He plays one of the street game artists, brothers, that are, like, obsessed with eggs. Now, I'm not a person that uh, has TikTok, mind you. Um, I'm not really a fan of the platform, whatever. It is. Stupid. Hate me, if you want. I don't care. But my girl, she does watch TikTok, and I, in turn, I end up watching it, because she'll take over the TV with her phone. But Rob Paulson has a TikTok. And I absolutely love watching any of those because, actually, the other day we watched him singing uh, the Countries of the World from the Animaniac show. Yeah, <laughs> he was doing that. It's amazing that he can still actually, like, like how he did it in the first place is really amazing. Well, you know, you figure at least he probably had a script when he was in the studio. He can do it without a script. That's what I mean. Like, like he could definitely do it without a script. How, how he many did times on... did he have to like 
do it to, to have that memorization. I wonder how many cons he's been asked to sing it that he's had to remember it. You know? Like... Not that it would be, like, incredibly difficult or impossible to do, but, I mean, it's... It's not the same as, like, singing, like, Happy Birthday, where, every, like, it's so ingrained in your head for... Yeah. Because you literally hear it your whole life. Every birthday, and then any birthday you go to, I mean, obviously you're going to remember it. But how often do you hear Rob Paulson singing, you know, The Countries of the World? Not very often. Well, this reminds me of, uh, the last time we played it. On that one. That one wouldn't, wouldn't die. That one wouldn't die. Yeah, what was that? Uh, if we were talking about Austin Powers. Oh, Austin Powers, yes. Out the window. Falling out, yep. Why won't you just die? Why won't you die? <laughs> the fall will kill us both, Powers. <laughs> uh, that'll never stop being funny to me, either. Mike Myers? Mm, yeah, Exactly. He'll never stop being funny to me. Oh, we're really flying through this now. Look at that. Boom. Done. Holy crap, that was fast. That, that's the fastest speed run. That you was know, the fastest on him. Obviously, it shows that we've played this like more, more times than we care to. You know, it's, it's whatever. You know, I mean... It's a good game. It is. We're, this is our first video for this revival. There's bound to be hiccups. I'm sure this won't be the and only I mean, video we're with hiccups. And, we're almost neck and neck with each other, too. Yeah. I'm improving as we play. <laughs> Either you're improving or I'm just getting mm. worse. Maybe it's a little bit of both. So yeah, that last boss battle, not in the arcade version. I don't even think that Technodrome stage is in the arcade version. Uh, I don't think you actually see the inside of the Technodrome until... You fight Shredder. I could be wrong though. I might actually. I think I am wrong. I can't. I'm not 100% sure on that. At the very least, the stage is done slightly different, maybe. But this stage is another one that has a, a difference. But it's only it only comes with at the uh, boss part of it again. Um, you don't fight Slash in the arcade version. You fight a mud monster. Why, I don't know. I don't know if he's supposed to be actually like primordial ooze or something, but Here's definitely looks one. like a mud monster. So. That, that one wouldn't die. Oh, yeah. Like, it's always the pink ones, too. Well, they, they if you notice, they put these, like, their fists up and they have, like, something in their fists blocking your attacks. I believe it's like the only foot soldier that does it. Oh, we just got plowed over by rock soldiers. Now, do you think we'll actually beat 25 minutes on this one? If we can? I think it'll be close. I mean, that, that shredder uh, battle went quick, so... I was going to say, if we can, like... i say that should be our goal at this point try and knock out like, as quickly as we can. Absolutely. Make this, um, make this the best one yet. <laughs> the best of the three? I mean, at this point, and one of the, like, I guess not worst things about this game is, but there's not, like, a lot of, like, unlockable, like, unlockable kind of things. There isn't, no. But it's back in those days, there wasn't much. Secret kind of like passage or like bonus items. I mean, they give you items, but they're they're placed, they're placed in the same place every time. And you you know that it's there. Yep. The game does not change ever. True. It's got that uh, replayability kind of thing where if you play it once, you almost can play it a hundred times, and nothing else is. Really nope. But yet it's still so enjoyable. Every darn time. Even with playing it three times a night, I am still having fun. <laughs> like, to be completely honest, I am still having fun. It just uh, goes to show, like, 
I, yeah, but I guess like if that we were gonna like give the game like one critique, that's what I would critique it for. Yes. That it's, it's just the same thing as and ever. Yeah. Which there's a lot of games that are like that though. I mean, most of the games from that time. So. But the thing is that you, the, you, they were usually very difficult, so it took you longer to get through them. You had to play them a lot to get to the end, because you had to learn them. Which brings me to uh, talking about... Uh, Dragon's Lair. A, well, oh god. <laughs> uh, I was thinking... Oh, excuse me. I was thinking more our little uh, series we're going to do where I pick a game, I play, uh, I play it, I get one continue to get as far as I can, and then... I'm nice and give you three continues to see if you can actually make it as far. Because, you know, you figure how many years it's taken me to get as good at some of them as it has. And this is going to be your first go at them. It should be interesting to see how you handle those. Especially since you're not, like, a huge gamer. Like, you have your favorites, which... What was your... Uh, I asked you before what your favorite Super Nintendo games were, so... Donkey Kong Country. Actually, that's a great game. But that's definitely not what he said. Uh, Disney's Pinocchio. He did say that, but he <laughs> wasn't serious, I don't think. It's an okay game. I, I could never beat it. I honestly don't know if I've ever played that one, to be honest. No, but you did say that you really liked the first Jurassic Park game. True. Other than the fact Min that minus its uh, lack of password or saves, but you know what? Uh, but you know what? Your favorite actual Super Nintendo game does have saves, or it does have passwords. Yeah, it has a password system. It does, which is Super Mario. Yes, <laughs> zombies ate my neighbors. Zombies ate my neighbors. He's yeah. being he's being a smart ass over here. <laughs> to be honest with you. I, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I did like uh, Super Mario World. It's one of my all-time favorite Mario games, for sure. It's really hard for me, though, to choose between Mario 3 and Super Mario World. Uh, they're both such phenomenal games. Yeah, we're not beating our... I was going to say, uh, this one seems just, like it's... He's not being nice to us at all and letting us hit him. You know what? Just go away. Just, just I, die. I keep going off camera. <laughs> um, what else did we cover in the, the the two other attempts that we need to bring up? <laughs> well, we talked about like um, like the music aspect of it. Yeah. Um, one of the things we definitely want to do is we're going to do some cover music. You're going to hear me attempt to sing. You may want to cover your ears. Um, but no, uh... Unless we can get Kaylin. Of course. Involved. Shout out to her. She's a beautiful voice. She does. Um, definitely going to have to throw a link in there to, uh, Harvest Moon, though, in, in the description below. Give you guys a little taste of what this guy can do and what she can do. And uh, Tony was still with you when you guys did those. At the time, yeah, he was, he still, was the bassist. He's still playing bass on those recordings. So definitely, would like to get those put out there. And then you guys, you and uh, Kay, played at my son's 12th birthday party, which was awesome. And I'll tell you, this guy, I told him, you know. Two hours tops. That's all you gotta play. Uh, you know, and take a break in between. That way you can enjoy the party too and have some food and whatnot. This guy maybe took a 15 minute break twice if you're lucky. So when did you guys start playing? I don't know. I think I came out and started setting up. Well, you set up early. 12. And you started playing even then as to practice, and then the practice just kind of went into performance. And I, I want to say it was around about one, two o'clock. 
and then he played even after Kay had left and everything got packed up. He brought his acoustic in and just kept playing till about one, two in the morning. I attempted to sing a few songs. I was a little, I think, a little too tipsy to even attempt to actually sing because I feel like New Year's went much better. <laughs> It was the 4th of July weekend, so... Yeah. Yep, because that's my son's birthday. 4th of July. Actually, it was on 4th of July this year. It was. Like, yeah, you, you played on 4th of July because, like I said, that's my son's birthday, so... I'd like to do it again this year. It'd be really cool. Hell yeah. Felt bad, though, because my daughter asked why she didn't get a band for her birthday party. I was like, um, they weren't doing anything yet, or they probably would have been. <laughs> oh. When's her birthday? June 6th. Oh, no, sorry, June 7th. Oh, he doesn't even know. Oh, okay, I do. I always do that. It's the sixth month. I do that. Because we made the joke, and I know it's the seventh, because we made the joke that her, her birthday is seven uh, eleven, and it's just like her mouth that never stops, never shuts, never closes. <laughs> oh, Ronnie! Right. Which, of course, in those in those recordings, they they missed the good night from my daughter. <laughs> she just kind of peered in and good night. Has they always have to like. butt in and be involved in some way, shape, or form. Though. Not that that's bad. But no. Oh, my, my son's already asking, hey, um, when can I be on? <laughs> and, like, my kids do have their own YouTube channel. Uh, it has one video so far. They were opening Hatchimals. Um, that's okay. I got it. They were already dead. That's why they were flashing, <laughs> hitting each other. That's why I stopped. They were done. You're like, what are you swinging at over there? Absolutely nothing. Two guys that are already beat. Uh, I was just joking with you. Uh, I know. It's funny. I'll just stop. I'll just stop. You, 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 you got this. Here, I'll just let you do this whole stage. But okay. Getting back to where we were. Um, Just look up Rontro, the Rontro kids in... Uh, they got a video if you really want to watch a bunch of kids opening Hatchimals. Or you may have little ones that may want to watch something like that. Um, I want to get more of their videos actually posted. I have a couple more. I just have to work on them. Um, so there is that. I know probably when we do the arcade version of this, I'll probably bring my son in on that one. Because, I mean, there's four sticks. We need four players. And that time I will be Michelangelo. <laughs> you got to play it in the arcades. Right? So I how, did. How was it, like, having, like, the extra ability to have more than just two? It was Maybe amazing, like actually. Um, my first experience of playing a Turtles game... In the arcade was Chuck E. Cheese, actually. Um, fifth grade, or no, I'm sorry, I was wrong about what grade it was. I believe it was fourth grade, because fifth grade we went to the Carnegie Science Center. That was a cool uh, little trip. I like that place. That place is amazing. But um, the f uh, fourth grade we went to Chuck E. Cheese, and me and three other classmates, we played Turtles 2, the arcade game. Turtles and time wasn't even a thing yet. Um, and it was cool to actually be able to have four people sitting there because I remember playing the NES version with my dad, you know, and it was stuck to two players. Even though there was a multi-tap uh, accessory, I believe that didn't come out till after Turtles Two came over. And not to mention, it probably the hardware the hardware probably wouldn't have been able to handle it. There have been too much going on on screen at once. So to actually play the same game that I would play with my dad all the time in four-player was cool. Like, 
it, it made it so much more fun to have multiple people. I, I swear they threw more foot soldiers at you too. So like it just made it so much more fun. Tell you what, though, it's cramped. It's just shoulder to shoulder to do that. Yeah, you don't have a lot of space to, to kind of get in. Not that many people, anyway. And I mean, even the 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 deck for the the sticks was longer, but it just still wasn't really enough room to get four people in there comfortably. But I mean, you were never there long enough to care, as it just ate your quarters. Even, and even if you were good enough to finish the game, it wasn't a long game, so... But yeah, I'm definitely down to, for some Dave and Busters one of these days, because me and my girl have both been wanting to check out Dave and Busters the, for... The best day to go ever. is Wednesdays. Well, what do they do on Wednesdays? They, they're half off. Oh, nice. So yeah, that would be the perfect time to go for sure. Oh my. Keep getting hit by those barrels. Yeah, we'll have to uh, plan the time here, Ronnie. Absolutely. Where you're like. Where you're not busy and I'm not busy, which is hard to come by. I don't know. I'm. See, my evenings are almost always open. That's usually when we sit and watch TV and chill for the night but definitely want to get more of this type of stuff done get this content out there and hopefully actually go somewhere with this channel this time around so I didn't get to mention this time around uh, the stage we just did uh, Barry and Michelle wounded knee uh, my favorite personal level of this entire game love the sound track to it like the music that plays in the background I always thought it was cool the the whole pace sound with it it's like you know didn't there wasn't too many games back in the day that had voice done in it so it was kind of a nifty little thing and in the arcade version um, Instead of at the pirate ship fighting uh, Bebop Rocksteady, you fight Toka and Razar. Well, um, again, I just lost my train of thought. I hate when that happens. Talk about uh, Mode Seven. The wonderful software. The Mode Seven chip. Which uh, is what made this stage possible. In the arcade version, this was left to right side scroller. Um, this was new to the Super Nintendo going the way we're going. It was done with using the Mode 7 chip. Uh, we're not moving other than moving left to right. The stage is actually moving underneath us. So, nifty little bit of trivia there for anybody that may not have known that um, it's actually a trick of the eye it's tricking your eye into thinking that you're moving but you're really not your surroundings are and they, you know even when you mention it and you try to see it the other way it's, it's, it's I've never been able to see it the other way I still see it as I'm moving so I always thought that was cool now this battle's still the same, but otherwise this stage is completely different on the on the arcade. I kind of forgot to mention about the differences this time around because I've said it so much tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to remember exactly what the heck you said and when you said it. I mean, it don't really matter, but I'd, I'd like to try and remember all the information I gave the first two times. <laughs> Definitely some stuff that wasn't brought up, but now there's been no real opportunity to bring it up. Mm. 
Yeah. You're going to pay. <laughs> well, here we go. Battle of Shredder. We're still recording. Yay. <laughs> we might succeed on the third try. <laughs> third try. Third time's the charm. That's yes. what they always say. That's what they say. And I just want to say again, like, this probably would have never happened. This probably wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for this guy here. Um, he's the one that brought it up to me, so. It's like, hey, let's let's revive it. And here we are doing it. And here we are doing it half-assly because, you know, we failed the first two attempts. <laughs> <laughs> well, we... We did really good. I don't know if we're going to beat our time there. I don't think that's going to I think uh, our fight was Slash. That really hurt us. We did. We were really good there at the beginning, but I think... Oh, really, really, really screwed the pitch this time around. We really dropped the ball. But yeah. Definitely have a, a little bit more of an edge this time for for the videos as far as like don't look so dingy and dark and awful. So hopefully production quality is going to go up from here on out. That was one thing that definitely needed worked on. I don't know, Ryan. What, what do you think we should do after this? I mean, we're obviously doing like a let's play. Well, we're doing a let's play at the moment, but I was thinking uh, next video that we do, I'd like to get the um, that one series started I said about of me playing a game with one continue and you having three. I think I want to get one of those done. And in between, I don't know, I, I think we need to do a cover song, too. We need to get the music thing going. But I think what I'm going to, I think the first game that I'm going to have you play, that I'm almost certain you've never played, that I can uh, do okay at, is Ninja Gaiden for the NES. I'm not talking the new ones that were 3D and on like the Xbox and stuff. I'm talking old school Ninja Gaiden. One of the hardest games, in my opinion, of all time. It took me 25 plus years to beat the first one. And that only happened a couple years ago, actually. I thought you were going to say Kingdom Hearts. Oh boy, that that's a multi-video <laughs> game right there, buddy. I've not played any of those. You're missing out. Uh, they're fantastic games, they really are. And I just so happen to have like all of them, so hey. all of them. Yes. Even though like 33 and like an eighth over a D or something well, like that, or whatever. I have called. the videos for it because. Um, what I did was I got all the stuff on PS4, and there's a couple games they couldn't actually put on it because they're licensed to Nintendo. But I have played that one, and it's actually really good. I don't have access to the games per se, but you can still get that part of the story because... They were allowed to have the cutscenes from those games. They just weren't allowed to have the full game, like the, the playable part of the game for... Like I said, I think it's because Nintendo, it was licensed to Nintendo. So basically, I think it was that one, and um, they had this other one on DS that was 
weird. I can't remember the name of. I believe you just get the cutscenes for that as well. Which is weird because uh, 3DS had Dream Drop Distance, and I believe you can play that one in that collection that I have. So I don't know. It's 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 a weird it's a weird total thing. That whole timeline, yeah. And I heard three did not help it at all. As I have not played the whole way through three, I haven't even started three actually. I wanted to start going through all the Kingdom Hearts again, and I wanted to do them in in order of story putting me at birth by sleep right off the bat. There's a couple voice actors in there, though, that um, might interest you. Who's in there? Well, Xehanort is um, voiced by uh, Leonard Nimoy. Okay. And, like, the the character's teacher, master, or whatever, he is voiced by Mark Hamill. Nice. Yes, so... Two, uh, two guys from sci-fi... Like the biggest... Sci-fi guys ever? Well, the two biggest for, like, their res like franchises, respectfully. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just... I never thought like, you'd ever see Leonard Nimoy and Mark Hamill their names together in credits. Never thought in a million years I'd see something like that. Well, you know who voices Sora, right? Mm -mm. Haley, Haley Joe Osmond. Okay. From, uh... What is that? Sixth Sense, I believe. Yeah, that's the one that voices Sora. Am I dead? I'm not dead. <laughs> well, you looked at me as you said you've seen dead people. What's that light? That's a ghost. It is beautiful. <laughs> look at it. The final it does look kind of nice. Here's something I didn't bring up in any of the videos. You know who played Super Shredder, right? In Turtles Big 2 Secret sexy. News? Of course, Kevin, Kevin Nash. Nash. Big Daddy Cool Diesel. <laughs> or just Diesel. Many names. Too sweet. <laughs> yeah, I was such a huge Wolfpack fan back in the day. I still have my Wolfpack shirt, actually. It's a bit faded and stuff, but I do still have it. That's because Sting is like my favorite wrestler of all time. <laughs> he is uh, come back into the wrestling world, so I see. Him. I heard. And you'd think that I'd uh, get back into watching AEW because of it, but um, I just don't have time for wrestling like I used to. I mean, come on, I used to be in it. That's uh, I mean, that's kind of how we met. Other than you worked at. Uh, the one store here in the town that we live in for many, many years. So I knew you to see you, but didn't really know you. And then you and your brother became ring crew. And the rest, as they say, is history. Heck, we didn't even start really hanging out right away after that either, like, other than at the wrestling shows. That wasn't until, oh, I don't know. Actually, I think since, like, right about the time we started doing the movies and stuff. Which was, like, three years ago now. But yeah. we've known each other for a good, like, six, seven. I was always, uh, good friends with Nick and Sean. Yes. Which are in the films as well. So you have seen them a time or two if you have paid attention to this channel in the past. Well, we did it again. 
we did it for the third time tonight. I don't think we beat our time, though. I definitely don't think so. And I believe everything went well this time. I think the only thing we got to worry about is audio. <laughs> they want us to defeat Hard Mode to become true ninjas. Which means we didn't get the full ending. But there's next time. Uh, almost. Okay. Uh, it's better than time. our first one, still, so... We're at 26 minutes. Yeah. Really? Okay. I mean, it was only like 45 seconds off from... Yeah. From what we were... Not even. Before. It was like 40 seconds off. So it's a really good average time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was fun for the third time. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do it again sometime, but not... Not this game. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not um, this game and not today. I mean, this game again eventually, because we got to do hard mode. Most definitely. So. But I definitely want to put out there again, like, comment, subscribe. Listen to my, co uh, my cover of Harvest Moon. That'll be in the comment section below, along with a link to our merchandise. We did bring up the merchandise, right? Yeah, we have. Okay. Shirts, cups, and masks. Yes. And um, not sure how it works. If, um... Uh, the first two weeks, I guess we're gonna. It'll be some sort of sale, from my understanding. Um, I don't know if that's done through a link or through a code. If it is a code, I will make sure to put it here in the video, at the bottom of the video. And uh, if it isn't a code, then it's probably just the link that'll be down there as well in the in the uh, description. Um, I think, I think that's about it. I think, I think we're good. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Again. Oh, yeah. Something new that I'm not used to saying about, because this wasn't a thing the last time I did a video. There's also a bell down there, too. Click on the bell, because it will alert you when a new video is posted. As long as you are subscribed and you press that bell. So, definitely do that. So I guess that's it for now. Until next time. Until next time. I'm Rontro. I'm the slightly irritated, happy video game geek. Josh. <laughs> and we will see you next time. And until then, game on.